Welcome everyone to 22 brutally challenging games on the Nintendo Switch ranked. Yes, we're going to have a little bit of fun putting the easiest to the hardest. Before I start on this, remember if you're a new watcher here at Switch Watch, make sure you hit that subscribe button and bell notification. The reason why is we're giving away a Nintendo Switch Lite and Zelda Link's Awakening when we hit 50,000 subscribers. For all of you Switch Watchers that continue to support us, thank you so much, we do appreciate that. And you're already in the draw if you're already subscribed. So let's get straight down to business. Death Squared, now this little puzzler is great to play with a friend or partner, but the later levels are super hard. The frustration can really build up because of it, but the great thing is that you're playing with a partner. I've seen some very heated arguments with this one formed because of this game. For those that are amazing at solving puzzles, there are insanely hard ones to master in this as well. How about a group of four of you working together? Could be an absolute disaster or bring you closer together. This procedurally generated top-down shooter is a huge amount of fun, but one death and you are having to restart a large chunk of the game. Patience is required so you can build up your arsenal, but for those with a short fuse, this game can induce some profanities. Play with a friend who is not as equally skilled and wave that friendship goodbye, at least for a few days because of this game. Binding of Isaac Afterbirth Plus is one super addictive game, but it's also quite difficult if you don't have that little bit of luck on your run. This is a procedurally generated top-down twin-stick shooter and the frustration comes in when you just don't get the items you require to get deeper into those dungeons. The balance though is pretty much spot on. It's a fantastic game and if you're a fan of Ed McMillan then you're going to love this. You should give it a try because you're going to have that one more go feeling every time. Much like The Binding of Isaac, this is a top-down, twin-stick shooter with procedurally generated levels. Again, it is very difficult because if you die, you are having to start all over again. This is one of the best and most addictive twin-stick shooters on the Nintendo Switch, but also one of the most challenging. Reaching far into the gungeon only to get killed because of a lack of concentration can make it hard to take in. I absolutely love this game when it came out and I recommend checking out my review at the top right hand side of the screen. Spelunka Party, oh man this one really gives me the feeling of red mist. It's clumsy collision detection means you will die in mid air if you don't make the perfect jump or if you jump from a height which is deemed too high. Proper old school in that regard. Uh, this game is sure to drive you nuts. The worst thing is that it's charming so it will grab you to keep you playing. However I feel the frustration will be too much for many. Unfortunately it does hinder the game from reaching that perfect combination of hard and addictiveness. This one is where rage quitting is common due to the mechanics. This charming little platformer, Slime Sand, is where you maneuver our little slime ball through all manner of traps and things which are going to kill you. You have incredibly fast paced twitch time platforming, you get chased by walls of acid, you slime your way through cracked walls and surfaces, bust through tense situations with a speedy dash move, oh it sounds delightful doesn't it? Well be prepared to bite the dust more often than not in this challenging platformer which will see you blowing a gasket from time to time. Calm down, take a walk and get a cup of tea before coming back for years yet another go. Yes, it's also incredibly addictive. Tiny Barbarian DX is another game published by Nicalis and a tough one at that inspired by heroic fantasy action. This is a 2D platform action and combo based hack and slash with retro pixel art which looks really cool it has a chip tune soundtrack but by god this one is as tough as they come so i only purchased this if you're looking for a really tough platforming challenge Butcher is a 2D side scroller and it's meant to be played on hard. It's one of the hardest games you're going to play on the Switch. It's also so rage inducing at times that you'll need to cool down often. This is like Doom but in 2D. Don't wimp out and play through this on easy as it will not be as satisfying and on top of that the actual developer will take the mickey out of you. But if it stops you from pulling your hair out then it may be the best thing to do. 
Having just reviewed Valfaris, which you can click on the top right hand corner, this is an action 2D platformer which can be as hard as nails at times, especially on hard mode. And with Game Plus coming soon, this is going to make people cry even more and more switches are going to be in danger of losing their lives. If you can handle this, then it's an awesome game with a great soundtrack, gorgeous gory pixel art and an awesome array of weapons. One of the best 2D platformers on the Switch and one which we rated a 9.5 out of 10. This game respects your time and is challenging enough for both casual and hardcore gamers. Please don't use the assist mode though as that really does take away from the accomplishment. For those that want an even bigger challenge, get those strawberries and try those B-side levels which are incredibly difficult. This game for me has the perfect balance between its challenge, frustration levels and how addictive it is. What can we say about Dark Souls that's not already been said? The damn game is so hard that other games have modelled themselves on this one, but this is the king when it comes to difficult games. I know Juan and James have completed all of them, but it has not been without sacrifice. They have broken Xbox controllers piled up in the corner of the room, but at least they got more exercise due to walking around the neighbourhood to cool off although water bills did rise due to constant cold showers. This role-playing action game from the now legendary From Software it has everything. Great depth of combat, great lore, epic level design. While it may be hard, it's an epic game that everyone should play and persevere with. Super Meat Boy is a tough as nails platformer where you play as an animated cube of meat who's trying to save his girlfriend, who happens to be made of bandages, from an evil fetus in a jar wearing a tux. This game was released back in 2010 and still holds up today. On the Switch it's been given a new lease of life and a bunch of new players will no doubt be screaming at their TV or Switch. For an extra challenge, try to collect all of the bandages to be crowned the King of Platformers. Uh, I made that bit up. But if you do manage it, I will call you the King of Platformers. This one should come with a rage inducing warning though. Another game designed by Edmund McMillan which is frustrating and as hard as nails. It's a 2D platformer which just never lets up. Some levels will take you a crazy amount of concentration and dedication to complete and the game will require you to take a break quite often to keep your sanity. This is a game which will make you think about throwing your TV out of the window or your switch against the wall. I know for me, I nearly did. It didn't quite have that balance between the challenge and how frustrating it can be. This one is probably for the more hardcore players out there. Those who want to collect the tumours will see red quite often. Slain is a game that mentally scarred Juan so badly when he reviewed it that he can't even bring himself to talk about it. I luckily played it more casually. What can I say about Slain? This is a game which is a 2D hack and slash platformer and is one which almost had me beaten on many occasions. With its mini bosses, bosses, big bosses and all types of in-betweens, this game will have you absolutely raging. I stuck with it for a bit as I'm a sucker for punishment, but it's one of the hardest and most frustrating games I have played to date on the Switch. With no other difficulty modes, this is one for hardcore gamers only. Casuals will not be able to live with the constant death full stop. Ghana is a tough as nails procedurally generated 2D platformer with roguelike elements. The story follows the main character on a journey to cheer up his only friend in this world, a giant land-bound whale named Sally. Determination is key here, you will die repeatedly, but you will also keep learning how to play the game well as you progress. The further you get into Ghana, the more weapons you'll be able to unlock until you stumble upon your favourite playstyle and build. Up until that point though, be prepared to be a goner many times. And with that comes temper inducing rage. Wolverblade is a visceral cinematic side-scrolling beat-em-up bringing a modern twist to the classic gameplay style of the 90s arcade scene. There's no hand holding in Wolverblade, it's straight into the action, old school style. Wolverblade skips the starter and tucks straight into the meat. This was so hard it needed a patch to allow more casual players to play. The only way to play this is in hard mode. Be aware that it may be the end of your Switch if you have a temper, so those with short fuses need not apply. When this game came out, we actually scored it a 9 out of 10 on our website, and it seems like years ago now, but Jordan made a video review of this one on his channel before we joined the team at the end of 2017. Thank God we've got him on board now. 
Wow, Thumper is tough. It's one of the best rhythm games on the Nintendo Switch and was a game that was one of the first reviews we did here at Switch Watch. It's one of those games which is high on the frustration scale but also really addictive. It has you hurtling down a track as a silver beetle at high speeds where you'll have to press buttons in time with the rhythm to stay alive. Breakneck speeds, lane splitting, jumps, corners all add to the insane difficulty. It was one of the really tough games early on on the Switch, but one that's also an essential purchase. Darkest Dungeon, again, is one of the hardest games you're going to play in your lifetime. Challenging, gothic, roguelike, turn-based RPG about the psychological stresses of adventuring. Recruit, train and lead a team of flawed heroes against unimaginable horrors. Stress, famine and disease and the ever-encroaching dark are all things that can get you. All sounds well and good, but actually being successful is another matter. The amount of times that you're going to die in this game is absolutely astonishing and is enough to make you want to pull your hair out, but persevere and the rewards and feeling this game gives you is fantastic. Dead Cells is pretty much a masterpiece in my opinion. I reviewed it when it came out even though I knew it would be more of Juan's alley with how brutally difficult it can be. But that didn't stop me giving it full marks despite me wanting to break my switch in half at times. I'd play this until 1 or 2 in the morning just because it was so addictive and dying only meant a chance to experience it one more time. It's difficult and wondrous in equal measure. For me, it's truly balanced in rage and love. Mastering Ikaruga is going to be one of the hardest things you can do on the Nintendo Switch. Mastering that polarity switching mechanic between bullets which are the same colour which can be absorbed by your ship and the opposite colour which does you damage is what you need to master to really get great at this game. But there's going to be a lot of frustration on the way. Nevertheless, a fantastic game this is. Cuphead. This boss rush game is absolutely brutal. Each boss can take a long time to overcome as you learn their patterns but you will have to own your skills to the max to beat this game and to keep calm and carry on because this has the ability to make you lose your cool very quickly and you don't want that to happen. While it may look pretty and have an awesome soundtrack, don't let that fool you with the immense challenge which lies within. Before finding out what our number one most challenging game is on the Nintendo Switch, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and bell notification so we can let you know when our next video goes live and of course to be in the draw to win a Nintendo Switch Lite. Yes, our number one most challenging game was between Cuphead and Fury and in the end we decided to go with Fury purely because this one is the one that caused me personally the most rage. It had me squeezing my switch a little tighter than I should have been. The missus had to have a word with me a few times because of the profanities coming out my mouth which she could hear from the other room. Fury starts off by telling you that you should only be playing this game in hard mode otherwise you're punished and you won't get any of the unlockables in easy mode. Not one to bow down, I played this how the devs wanted me to play it on hard. It's a bullet hell shooter and a fighter all in one game. Yes please, give me more but this boss battler gets hard quick. By the time you reach the fight in the sewers, you'll wish that the game had a little bit more mercy on you, but no, it will drag you kicking and screaming to your death over and over again until you learn its mechanics and the patterns. Now, unless you have the dedication to do that, you may as well not bother. This is one of the hardest games I've played, period, and which induced my fury on many occasions ladies and gentlemen a massive thank you from jordan james and i we really appreciate it let us know in the comment section down below your hardest game on the nintendo switch or on any other console that you've played we'd love to get involved in the discussion from james jordan and i have a great weekend and week ahead and we'll see you again on the next one take care